Hey friends, are you wondering what you can make with canned chicken? It's something I always keep in my pantry. It's versatile, tasty, shelf stable, and inexpensive. Today, I'm sharing some brand new canned chicken recipes. From a quick and easy lunch, to a comforting and cheesy casserole, and something really unexpected in between. So stay tuned, you won't wanna miss a thing in tonight's video. One of the most common recipes people make with canned chicken is chicken salad. Today, we're gonna make a cheesy, fresh chicken salad and toast it up as an open-faced sandwich. I'm gonna get the cutting out of the way first. I'm gonna slice up a little bit of this really crusty sourdough loaf I got out of the deli at Kroger. And I'm just gonna dice up this cilantro and a little bit of tomato. I'm using one 12 and a half ounce can of chunk white chicken breast. Drain it well and then let's chunk it up in the bowl. We're gonna add about two thirds cup of mayonnaise. You can always add a little bit more if you need to. Gonna crack in a little bit of salt and pepper to taste and doing the same with a little garlic powder and a little bit of paprika. Let's give this a good initial stirring to get everything combined. I'm gonna put in just about half of that little Roma tomato and almost all that cilantro that I chopped up. I'm also gonna put in about three ounces or half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Now, if you like things hot, you could definitely throw you a little bit of hot sauce in at this point. That wouldn't hurt a thing in the world. I know with this cheddar cheese, a lot of people are thinking, oh, you could make it uh, with some bacon and put a little ranch seasoning in there. And you definitely could. But honestly, I mean, I love chicken bacon ranch as much as the next person, but I get kind of tired of it sometimes. I want to try something new. I'm going to throw in just one more little dollop of mayonnaise. I feel like it could use just a smidgen more. I went pretty light-handed at first. Take that mixture and spread it right across that sourdough bread, and we're gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for about six to eight minutes. I only made half of this recipe today for lunch, but I will have the full recipe linked for you below. It'll take you to my website where you can get it in a printable form if you like to print them off and keep them on hand, or you can pin it to your Pinterest board. And while you're there, make sure if you've not signed up to receive updates from me, make sure that you sign up with your email to do that. I'm getting ready to send out my first newsletter here in the next little bit, and you don't wanna miss all the fun stuff that's gonna be happening there. I don't know that I had ever eaten chicken salad warmed up before I made this recipe. It was really, really good. And this chicken salad had a really different flavor than any that I've made before. No fruit, no celery, but it had the cilantro and the tomatoes in it. This was really great. I could see this on little mini crostinis as a perfect summertime finger food appetizer pool day snack. Canned chicken has saved supper at my house more than a few times. And you know where else I turn when I need help? America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. Honestly, sometimes I just experience burnout. I'm fresh out of new ideas for dinner, and just the thoughts of going to the store is overwhelming. That's when I pull up the latest menus for HelloFresh, pick out my favorite recipes from over 50 new ones every week, set my delivery date, and take the week off. HelloFresh handles the planning, shopping, and most of the prep for me too. It's delivered right to my doorstep with everything pre-portioned just for me and Patrick, so I'm not wasting money and food over buying groceries at the store to cook for just the two of us. The meals are always flavorful and delicious, and these summer veggies I unpacked were picked at peak ripeness less than a week ago. And I'm working really hard to balance making better choices and staying full without sacrificing flavor. And the fit and wholesome recipes from HelloFresh are packed full of produce with only 650 calories a serving. I also really love the 10-minute lunches like these Greek chicken salad lettuce wraps. 
They're calorie and carb smart. And for dinner, HelloFresh has quick and easy recipes that are ready in 20 minutes or less, so you can get out of the kitchen and enjoy summer too. HelloFresh plans are flexible and easy to work around your summer plans. You can even update your delivery address and have HelloFresh meals delivered right to your vacation destination. And when you sign up today, you'll unlock free appetizers for life with an appetizer of your choice in every HelloFresh box for free. Go Go to HelloFresh.com and use code MAMAAPPS for free appetizers for life. One free appetizer item per box while subscription is active. That's code MAMAAPPS at HelloFresh.com for free appetizers for life. I'll have all the details down in the description box for you below. And thank you, HelloFresh, for being a longtime supporter of the channel. Me and Maddie are loving the Caesar salads this summer. When I saw a Caesar salad pizza with the chicken crust, I knew we had to give it a try. We're gonna start by making our crust and we're gonna use a 12 and a half ounce can of chunk white chicken breast to make this crust. You want to make sure that you drain it off really well. And I'm gonna go ahead and chunk mine up just a little bit before we mix the rest of our ingredients in. And if you have seen my recent cottage cheese video, you know my record's not too good on making crust out of things other than bread. But hey, I'm a glutton for punishment. Let's give it a try. Now we're gonna crack in one egg, a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, a fourth a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm using panko. You don't really have to put these in at all. It just gives it a nice little extra crunch. Almost a teaspoon of garlic powder and about a half a teaspoon of paprika. I think I'm gonna crack in some black pepper. I always like a lot of pepper on my chicken. And I have this little container of chopped Italian herbs. I think I'll throw in a tablespoon of this too. Now let's just get all this mixed up together and don't get hung up on the seasonings. If you don't like something that I'm putting in, you don't have to, I'm just showing you what I like. You put in anything you want, add to, take away, however you want to do it. Now here's the part where it'll probably all go downhill for me. We're going to dump it out on a parchment lined baking sheet. And I just used a pizza pan. I thought it might help me keep a little more of a circular shape. And you form it into like a little pizza round. Really mash it together. You want it to stick together and hold when it's baking. Everything that I read about this little recipe says you want it thin, but they said the same thing about cottage cheese. We're gonna stick to maybe a quarter inch or a half inch thick. Now we're gonna put this in a 375 degree oven. I'm gonna check it at 25 minutes. It could take up to 30 or 35. While my crust is baking up, I'm just gonna go ahead and take that time to cut up my romaine lettuce. I'm just probably gonna use one little heart on this, chop it up really fine, wash it super good, and get it spun out in my salad spinner. Okay, I let mine go about 35 minutes. It's nice and brown, which is what everybody's look like. I'm gonna let it sit here and cool for a few minutes, and I'll go ahead and dress my salad. I'm just going to use a couple tablespoons, looks like, of this Aldi Caesar salad dressing. Me and Maddie really like that dressing. I have a new one in my grocery order I'm picking up in a little bit. I think it's by Ken's, and I love all of the Ken's Steakhouse dressings. I just threw in a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese, and I'm just going to toss this around a little bit. Moment of truth, friends. I'm gonna try to move this over to a cutting board. Oh, look at that. Oh, Lordy, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of it. Look at there. I'm gonna let it cool off here. I think it'll cool down a little bit quicker. My crust is holding together. Mine might be a little crispy around the edges. I don't think mine's gonna be as crispy as the ones that I have seen being made though. And that's okay. Let's put a little bit of Caesar dressing on our crust and spread it out. Give us a little sauce here. Let's top it with our Caesar salad. Oh, it's so pretty. Just 
give it a sprinkle more of Parmesan over the top. I'm so tickled with this chicken crust. It was delicious. All those seasonings in there made it so great. I've been thinking of all kinds of different combinations of seasonings to make this with and all different kinds of toppings. This was really good. This was a light lunch, but still it left you full with not a big thick crust. This was really good. Granny doesn't know what I made today, but I think that this turned out a whole lot better than the last little <laughs> thing that I tried with Granny. So I thought it was only fitting that Granny was here for the redemption of her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I haven't tried it yet either. Okay, let's try it together. Let's try it together. I like it. Like a big old bite. I put a bunch That's of good. seasonings. A bunch of seasonings in it. That's good. I took a big bite. <laughs> and the chicken is in the crust. Yes, the chicken is in the crust. Kind of makes me think of whenever we do like fried tuna patties or something. But really thin. And it's chicken. Crunchy. Mm -hmm. I love being a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like trying new things. I had to grab me a drink real quick. I was also thinking that, you know, you just don't have to use this for Caesar salad. You could bake this up and then put some of that pizza sauce, that low sugar pizza sauce we had the other day. That was good. Yeah. You could put that on it and then put your cheese and your toppings, stick it back in the oven. And if you're not a fan of Caesar salad, Granny said, does Caesar really have them little fish in it? And I reckon <laughs> it does. I reckon Caesar dressing does. But you already got your chicken on the bottom. You could use ranch dressing, some cheddar cheese, and put some bacon on that and some little tomatoes. Sounds good. That'd be good too, wouldn't it? Yeah. I feel redeemed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an utter failure no. at TikTok recipes. I knew you'd keep on. I would. Today we're starting with some canned chicken to make us a good old home style tasting casserole. This one's a white cheddar macaroni chicken bake. Go ahead and get the oven preheating to 400 degrees. While the oven's preheating, I'm gonna make this six ounce box of white cheddar shells and cheese up just according to the directions on the box. This is the first time I've ever used this brand of white cheddar macaroni and cheese. I've heard really good things about this one and the brand called Horizon. But if you just want to grab you a refrigerated carton of that Bob Evans white cheddar macaroni and cheese, if you can find that, it'd work fine too. While our macaroni is cooking up, we're going to put together the filling of our casserole. I'm starting with a 12 and a half ounce size can of chunk white chicken breast. I'm just going to chunk up any of the really big pieces and I did drain this. I'm going to use one can of cream of chicken soup with herbs. You can use plain cream of chicken, cream of chicken with mushroom, or just cream of mushroom soup. Any of those would do here. I'm going to add in about three quarters cup of frozen peas. I'm going to season this with my Auntie No No seasoning. This is salt, onion powder, and garlic powder. And I am cleaning out this container. That was probably a teaspoon. Since that's all I had left, I'm going to throw in just a little bit more garlic powder and a little bit more onion powder. If you're not using a seasoning blend, I would just throw in maybe a teaspoon each of onion and garlic powder and maybe a half a teaspoon of salt. I have not put any pepper in here yet, so I'm going to put that in. Almost forgot it. Just give all this a nice little combining. Now we're going to add our macaroni right in to our chicken and soup mixture. No shells left behind. <laughs> I forgot about putting these macaroni shells in here, so I'm having to be really careful. I used a smaller size bowl here for this, and I'm already committed to it. I am not changing bowls at this point. It's the perfect size, really. And you could definitely throw mixed veggies in here. You could use some broccoli. That would be really good. My family would really rather not have any veggies in this, knowing them. 
The great thing about this is that the only active cooking time you really have is when your macaroni is cooking up and you're doing all this other mixing while that's happening. After that, it's pretty much going to be set it and forget it. I've got about a two quart baking dish. I'm going to spray it with just a little bit of avocado oil spray and I'm going to turn my casserole right out into here. This is great with the macaroni and cheese. You don't really need to add any shredded cheese to this. You're gonna have all the creaminess from the soup, the ease of using canned chicken, and of course, if you had a rotisserie chicken or if you'd cook some chicken, you could definitely use that. You don't have to use canned chicken. These are just easy ways to not to use canned chicken. Now we're just gonna cover this with aluminum foil, put it in that 400 degree oven for 25 minutes. Then we're gonna pull it out take the cover off and put on about half a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm using panko, but you can use whatever kind you like. Then we'll stick it back in the oven for about five more minutes to get it nice and brown. Friends, I just cannot describe to you how creamy this little casserole was. And that Annie's white cheddar mac and cheese, I'll definitely be buying that again. This felt like a big warm hug. It felt like a fall comfort meal, but it was so good. I can't wait to try it again with some different vegetables added in. I love the crunchy topping. I did have to turn mine over to broil for just a few minutes because I really wanted it a little bit more brown. You could always mix a little butter in there too. And I served it with leftover pinto beans and a cornbread salad. If you've not seen last week's video, the top six salads of 2024, you need to go back there and grab this recipe and some more. Friends, I don't ever take for granted that you choose to spend a little bit of your time with me. And I thank you so much for it. Until next week, I send you love from my kitchen.